Hi there, welcome to ADO. Welcome to our new operatic soprano library, also called Maria. This is the most extensively deep sampled female soprano library ever done. It features over 6,500 different samples across a multitude of articulations. For example, we have six legatos. When you were listening to the demo in the early part of the video here, that was coming directly from a two syllable legato here, which I'll demonstrate shortly. One of the finest vocal legatos we've ever created that really gives a more lifelike experience. And I wanna say lifelike is really the true word for this library. We were trying to encapsulate the opera singer in all its incredibly challenging humanity, if you will. This is the human voice at the pinnacle of extremities, what it's capable of. And working with professional opera singers is a very humbling experience because they have such control over the vibrato and their vocal cords. The muscles in their throat is just totally different than that of a normal human being. They've been training for decades to really get the voice to becoming this unique shape shifting tool that can just produce a sound that we otherwise cannot produce. The essence of opera and in a way maybe the pinnacle of what we can do as singers. It's such an extremely beautiful and dramatic way of expressing ourselves, like the ultimate way of singing perhaps. Now, in order to embrace that fully, as I mentioned, we have over 6,500 different samples, not just legatos, but also thousands of different syllables, both one syllable, two syllables. We have ornaments, phrases, short notes, sustains, sound effects, everything you could possibly think you would want from an opera singer in order to write your own operatic piece. Now, before we get into it here, let me just play a snippet of a demo here using this two syllable legato here. And once you've heard that, let's come out here and let me demonstrate it for you. So that's our two syllable legato. Let me try to play the same phrase we just heard in the demo here. Notice how she's changing her vowels and her syllables. And if I trigger it a little bit different. Now, because we have unique vowel changes on every single legato interval here, if I just do a slight flicker like this, You'll notice that she's landing differently on a different vowel or syllable. So you can actually play the same melody in multitude of ways here. Let me try to play the same phrase here, but try to notice how it changes and pay close attention to these little flickers I do to trigger a different interval. I like to play it that way and try different combinations just until I find what sounds right. It's kind of magical that way that you can play the same phrase, but by triggering different overlaps here, you can change the vowels. The way we did this was freestyle, hence the name free syllable, but I tell you, it just works. Let me play another demo here using the same legato here, using sounds from our hybrid designs library, which is a library for sound pain and contact as well, really embracing the human voice. Everything you're gonna hear in this demo is made with the human voice here. And I just thought it could be so interesting to put the opera on top of that. So everything about to hear is made with a human voice. And again, this two syllable legato as well.
So a very simple legato transition. We're just going down the keyboard. And we can play it differently. Like that jump here is so extreme. And we can try a different vowel on that ending note. Isn't it cool? So just that little flicker will trigger a different kind of sound. So it's almost like we have many legatos inside of one. I just want to show you that because it's a cool trick in terms of shaping the vowels to your composition. It is freestyle, but as you can see, there are many different ways we can layer it together. Now, this is my favorite legato in the library. We also have the trident to AO kind of legatos. Let me just show you them as well. Let me try the A uh, fast here, so the interval is going to be a bit shorter. Compared to the one we just heard. Now, A uh, is the most common articulation in opera as well, and for vocal libraries in general. So we actually have four different speeds of it. Here's the third speed, which is slower, also known as portamento. You may notice how I had a couple of breaks when I was playing the slow one here. We can play it without breaks. I just happen to think that sometimes when we forget to create breaks, it's like the player is not breathing at all. It gives a little more of a sort of synthy vibe. You know, we have to breathe. So when we use vocal libraries like this, I like to think, and even when I'm composing, to sit and actually breathe with the library. Now, in order to sort of embrace that concept of breathing, we also have a unique legato staccato here, which is going to be very abrupt when we hit that interval here. It's more of a staccato sort of variation, but this is opera. We need the whole Swiss Army Knife tool set in order to do all the sort of dramatic measures that a real opera singer can do. And I think as we go into the next generation of vocal libraries, let's try to get out of the AIO kind of way of thinking and get into like what's more human. It just sounds more real. And again, I can play this phrase in different ways. Let me just go all the way up here until you start rolling on an R and a higher note here, but. We also have an O here. It's gonna be a little more tempered, but just to cover that as well. Isn't it beautiful just how many colors there is in a human voice? Like, even from the sort of higher notes here. The vocal chords are so different in the deeper notes here. It's just a... Just beautiful. Now, that's just the legatos. On top of that, we have thousands of syllables, phrases, and ornaments. Let me show you the syllables here. Obviously, you can play them across the entire keyboard, but um, this is going to be almost like an alphabetical speech synthesizer exercise for opera singers.
so many different tools, and that's just one bank with a buckload of syllables. And when you use syllables and vowels, I like to think of them sometimes in percussive shapes. Like this combination, these last four here were really like, this just felt like they belong together. Now, a little bit of a reminder about the human voice. When we listen to choral music choirs, when we listen to opera, for the most part, unless you're totally like an operatic or choral aficionado, nobody understands what they're saying. I say that because when I write for these things and choral demos, I never think about language. I know a lot of us really want that control and being able to type in the words, but in reality, if you really think about it, nobody understands what they're singing. Let me just show a little example of that. <laughs> But let's just say that we do want to try to shape our own opera in specific words. For example, up here we're listening to simple vowels like E and A. These are kind of long syllables, but let's say that, well, I want that more in a staccato fashion. Well, we have the same syllables but sampled differently in a shorter variation here. Let me just show. So tiny fragments, if you need a little bit longer, you can do that. If you need a little bit shorter, you can do that. And by having this entire sonic puzzle in front of you, you can really create your own masterpiece if you ever wanted to do that. But I do want to say like the free legato syllable, I come back to it all the time. It's just so fast. But this goes to show that if you want to go deep, we can go deep. And we can go even deeper. Let's go into the two syllables. Those are our syllables. Use them in combination with the legatos. Use them in combination with our ornaments and phrases, as I'll also show you. Our short notes, our sustains, our sound effects. This is what happens when you have 6,500 different fragments and you spend over two weeks deep sampling an opera singer. We really have a giant tool set in front of us here. How we use it is nearly infinite. I do want to mention this library is available in SoundPaint as well. SoundPaint is our own engine technology. It's for free. In some ways, I can do more in SoundPaint than in Contact. For example, I can play my legatos in complete polyphony. I can morph different vowels together, which is really cool. But for those of us who prefer the old classic Contact standard, we now have that available as well. Now, if you're familiar with the ATO catalog, you'll know that we have dozens of libraries that have natural arcs inside of them. This is the natural way an instrument, or a singer in this case, would express themselves in sort of a motion or an arc, if you will. You'll hear the dynamic go up a little bit and then come down. It's just a beautiful, more realistic way of expressing ourselves. This is where we can't just use crossfade or whatever technology we have available. And of course, we can also play three Marias at the same time. I see. I mean, isn't that amazing that a human being can even sing up here?
Now, this was a soft arc. We also have a stronger one here coming from Mezzo Forte into Forte down to Mezzo again. It's more powerful, bites a little more. Now, these were long arcs. We also have shorter arcs. And a little bit of a stronger, shorter arc as well. So beautiful in the lower notes as well. Now, as we talked about as well, we also have a multitude of sustains. And ah is the most common articulation. It's what comes most naturally out of the mouth as well. And while we can control these on the mod wheel, let me just try to play it isolated for you just to give you an idea and appreciation of how deep we're going on something just like ah in this library here. Beginning with the ah mezzo piano. or an A forte. Or an A forte fortissimo. And then there's also a specific form of A where they sort of go into the note almost with a portamento-like kind of attack. It's super cool. You'll know exactly what it is when you hear it. It's almost like having an old vinyl record and go like It's incredible, I mean. We like to spread a little bit outside the natural range. We also have O's both in mezzo piano and forte. Such a beautiful color here. And forte. And we're noticing that the vibrato is a tad quicker as we go up in the dynamics. It's very common in music. It happens with strings and other acoustic instruments as well. Vibrato follows dynamics. And like speaking of dynamics, we also have crescendos, decrescendos, and sforzandos in the library. Coming down. Just very different ways of building bridges in the music. Building up and then coming down. I love the sort of softer side to this one when she's really down. Isn't it beautiful? The voice sort of gets frail on those softer notes. real human being. So sweet. And this for Sando. It's 
sfrasanto is the notion of sort of having an initial dynamic coming down and then up again. But today's singing lesson is not done. We also have a bucket load of ornaments. These are also multi-sampled and designed to be used together with the syllables, the phrases, the legatos, the sustains, the short notes, all that stuff together here. But you'll know what I mean when you hear them in terms of what they're doing differently. These are just things that we have to sample this specific way. So to me, this is an ornament. It's not a static sustain. We have a little bit of a sort of curl or a twist on it. Da, 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 da. And we have them both in half notes and whole notes. Now, the modern ornaments that we just listened to were faster in their motion here. We also sampled them slower. Almost like legato. So a half note and then a whole note here. And we can go down. down a whole note. But there are also other things, for example, doing like octave glissandos, both going up and down. This is the stuff you can't do with multi symbols, but we've done it. Here's a more freestyle type of cadenza. She's gonna sing in these octave notions as well, but she's gonna be a little more playful. I like to create these sort of experiments in the libraries as well. They can sometimes bring happy accidents into our compositions and just free us a little bit from that sort of notion of like samples, staccato, samples, piccato. It becomes a little bit mechanical sometimes. So throwing in more of these sort of non-mechanical programs and patches for me just liberates me as a composer. So that's Cadenza in major. You can hear everything is happy and all that stuff. Let's go to minor. It's going to be the same thing here, but a little more in the darker sort of tone of things. Now, as this is a sonic deep dive into appreciating the deepest nuance of opera singer here, Check out these two different trills. One is a half step, one is a whole step. They're not the same, but in opera, because the vibrato is so extreme, it's just an appreciation of two different colors, somewhere in between a little bit. That's the half step, and here's the whole step. Just a little more. Isn't it beautiful? Once we go to the whole note, it just becomes a little more sort of extreme in the variation. Now, 
you would imagine, okay, we've gone through all this. We have legatos, sustains, syllables, ornaments, and all that stuff. But we also have a bucket load, thousands of different phrases that we can weave into all these tools as well. Now, there are so many phrases here. Every single key for every single patch here represents a unique sample. You'll see how we've classified these pieces here in major, minor, so you know what scale they're in. It's all there as a part of the entire Switch Army Knife operatic tool here. Go in, find something, weave it into the other things here. Let yourself be inspired by the works of the great masters as well. Um, I'll just play you a couple of different patches here. So this is a good example here. I don't know this particular piece here very well, but I can sort of make it my own here just by alternating between these two similar phrases here. Just use the phrases freely here. See the sonic Lego. Let's build something new from pre-existing pieces here. It's so dramatic all the time. There's so many things to show here. We could play phrases for hours as well. In this very last segment here, I also want to talk a little bit about our effects and our short notes. Let me just start here with the short notes and then we'll come back to the effects. I would actually prefer to demo the effects inside of Sound Paint just because there's so many more things I can do, particularly with those experimental patches inside of Sound Paint here. But let me just demonstrate the shorts here. We have effects in this library as well, just like Sound Paint, but Sound Paint is a more flexible engine, particularly if you want to get into that White Lotus kind of experimental kind of vocal stuff. This is where Contact is a little more of a sort of static, locked in engine. Uh, but let me show you the shorts here first, beginning here with the staccato, which is also run Robin based. I love these kind of short notes here because they're very playable. It almost feels like legato, even though it's not. Just a little bit of movement in the sound here. If you listen to the deep. And then the interval gets a little bit faster as she goes up. So beautiful. And last but not least, we also have a bucket load of sound effects in the library. When we have a trained opera singer at our fingertips here, it's amazing how many different colors and unique forms of expressions we can create here. Just check this out. I just think she's so adorable. Now, as I mentioned, for me, 
I do prefer to use the sound paint version of this library here, particularly when it comes to vocal effects here. The libraries are completely identical. You get exactly the same samples. But when it comes to stuff like mangling sound effects or playing polyphonic legato or just have deeper controls over the sounds, I tend to lean to sound paint just because we really created an engine with musicianship and performance in mind. So I would love to show you this last portion of the video here inside of sound paint. I'm in love with the TV show called White Lotus. I was really inspired by that inside of sound paint, trying to take these vocal effects here. And just see how far we can push them. Because in contact, we're locked to just triggering the samples here. But inside of sound paint, we can make them into so many other things, a whole cascading rain of opera singers. So thank you so much for making it to this point in the video here. And let's switch to the other part here. And just keep in mind, you get the exact same samples in both volumes here. If you love contact, all power to you. But if you really want to mangle the samples and just try to create something new out of it, which I like to do, not just being locked in the classical world, but perhaps start exploring what can we do outside this realm with all these amazing tools, then we're going to be in sound paint. Thank you. 